Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, the Novel, Chapter 8 Insanity, Thy Face is Love Karim silently trekked through the desert. He was searching for an item, something he could get for the woman he loved, Chandra. For years he had pursued her love, and now he was doing the one thing that would make her his. When Chandra first told him about the story of a powerful item in the desert, he was skeptical. He knew that many people disappeared in the desert. He had even heard tales about strange monsters living in the desert. One tale had spoken of a set of Roman soldiers that were devoured by such creatures. He also remembered that a few soldiers from his homeland had also ventured into those creatures. He truly thought the story was a legend. None of the soldiers that ventured into the desert to find the item ever returned. He even wondered why he was doing it. Maybe love did make people do crazy things. He also hoped the time in the desert was not affecting his mind. Karim almost jumped when he heard a voice call his name. He looked in the direction of the voice and almost thought he saw a mirage. In front of him was a ring of stones with strange markings on them. As he neared them, he heard a voice call his name again. He almost thought it was Shan Chandra when he finally was upon the ring of stones. He looked at the strange runes he saw and said, Is this what everyone has been searching for? Is this where that item is located? He carefully stepped forward and saw yellowish lightning arc from the rocks. Soon he saw the world change in front of his eyes. As the world changed, he swore for a moment he saw two people following him. When the world finally calmed down, he looked to see he was in a vast room. He looked around for a moment, trying to see the two other figures he had seen. He didn't see them now, but he wondered if he had seen a mirage. He wasn't even sure how he got into the place he was now. However, he had a feeling this was where he would find the item he was searching for. He started to look around the room he was in, and it appeared to be lit in a dim, eerie light, as well as a few wall-mounted torches. As he walked around the room, he saw several corpses on the floor, and he was startled when he saw amongst them a fresh one. He walked over to it and saw that it was a soldier from his own land. He looked around the room trying to see what killed the man. Whatever it had been, it had fled. He then pulled out his tulwar. He was a master of using the powerful blade and when he fought with it, it was like an extension of his body. Whatever killed this man would not kill him. As he looked around the room, he walked to a ladder along the one wall. He was sure it would lead him deeper into this ancient place. However, as he neared it, he felt dizzy and watched as the room changed. When the change was complete, he covered his ears as thousands of screams hit him. He opened his eyes 
and looked around and almost froze. The unreal location was only part of his problems for now he faced one of the figures that he had seen before. He wondered what the red-haired woman was, and what she was going to do to him. However, as he looked at her, one thought started to run through his mind. She looked very similar to Chandra. Yvette watched as Karim appeared before her. She could tell that at first he was scared. She looked at him and said, It's all right, Karim. Although it is frightening, you are safe here. She hoped she offered him enough assurance, since the place did not sound safe. She then said, Karim, when you leave here, you will be facing some things that you may never thought you'd encounter. Soon she saw him look at her as he said, It's remarkable how much you look like Chandra. Tell me, will I find what I am seeking there? She nodded and he smiled. She then heard Karim say, I will succeed in the name of love. Yvette smiled and said, Before you head to your quest, you should know what you are up against. She motioned to all the statues and said, All these people have played a part in some way to fight the eternal darkness. You are about to combat those evils again. The item you search for will help in stopping the eternal darkness. She watched as he looked at her and said, You need not worry. I shall take it from here and keep it someplace. I will explain it to my love, Chandra, when I tell her that I found it. Something made her wonder if Chandra was one of Pius Augustus's guises. Before she could say anything, she saw him rise and head over to the tome. As he passed the statues of Elia and Anthony, she said, Karim, know that you aren't alone, and that the book will have tools for helping you. Look it over when you can. It has magic that will help you get through the trials you are about to endure. Before he looked at the book, she saw Karim turn and say, There is a man following me as well. I saw him. Is he the one who will help me? She nodded, and he smiled and said, Then I will succeed. When he joins me, I am sure we will handle all the problems that come at us. She nodded, knowing he was right. She watched as he then grabbed the book and disappeared. As the world started to change around her, she nodded and said, Watch over him, Richard. I'll return to the present and await your return. She then saw the study return to her sight, and she was back in the present time. She watched then as Alexandra continued reading the chapter being sure to keep an eye out for any threats. When Karim returned to the room, he heard a sound that bothered him. He turned to see that some of the remaining corpses were rising. He thought he was losing his mind, but then he remembered what the woman said. She had told him he'd be facing things he might never have encountered. He also wondered if these things were the same things that killed the others that were here. He quickly pulled out his tall war and moved away from the creatures, making sure 
he always had room to back up. He worked swiftly to stop the things, and soon not a one was standing. After that last one had fallen, he looked at the book he had found. He opened it and Page drew it, amazed that it was written in his native language. As he looked through it, he saw there was a way to enchant an item. He turned a few more pages and discovered what looked like a map. As he looked over the map, he realized it was the room he was in. He saw the hole that was the ladder down. He then remembered that he was going to head down that ladder. He went back to the ladder, looked down, and then looked at the ladder. He sighed and said, The things I do for love. Once he descended the statue, the ladder, he entered a tunnel. When he reached the bottom, he noticed a man-like statue, wet. Looking at it, he knew it was important to get. He rushed forward to grab it and stopped. He almost didn't see the corpses starting to rise. This time he was ready for them. Just as they started to rise, he started using his tulwar and hack them to pieces. Every time he destroyed one of the things, he felt better. The whole situation didn't seem unreal. After the ones guarding the statuette were destroyed, he grabbed the statuette. He was surprised he could lift it, but he knew he needed it. He was about to continue down the tunnel when he noticed there was another corpse. But this one had a strange marking in it. It looked like one of the runes he saw in the book. He also noticed that there was a ladder by the corpse. He knew the creature had to be destroyed. He rushed the creature and slashed into the creature. He made sure it didn't hurt him and quickly ended its existence. As it fell, he saw the rune rise from the creature's chest, and as it disappeared in a flash of yellow lightning, he heard a voice say, Santak. He wondered if that was the word for the rune. He put that thought in the back of his mind as he climbed up the ladder the creature was guarding. Karen breathed a sigh of relief when he entered the room. The room looked like a shrine of sorts. In the center of the room was a huge pillar with three pairs of braziers on it. As he surveyed the room, he noticed three round panels on the floor. He felt there was something special about those panels. He walked over to one and felt it sink into the floor. As it sank, he saw one of the sets of braziers light up. He went to check them out, and when he left the panel, he saw them go out. He looked back at that panel and remembered the statuette he had picked up. He placed it on the panel and the braziers relit. He looked at the pillar again and said, So that's how it works. The panels light the braziers. He looked around and saw two more panels in the room. He then said, I wonder what will happen when I light all three sets. He then stepped over to the wall opposite where he entered. He had seen a glowing barrier in front of him. In that barrier, he saw the very rune he found in the tunnel. As he approached, it disappeared. He did see a ladder behind where the barrier was, and figured that was the next place he had to go. After he had descended the ladder, he grabbed a nearby torch. The tunnel he was in was dark. 
As he cautiously advanced, he saw more corpses on the floor. He also saw another statuette and a strange tablet. He knew he needed both of them. As he approached the statuette, he saw the corpses start to rise. He quickly pulled out his tall bar and destroyed the corpses. Once they were gone, he grabbed the statuette and then walked over to the tablet. He saw a strange etching on it with the word Chitturga. After he said the word, the panel disappeared. He then looked in the tome, turning to where the spells were, and saw the image on a page next to another one that glowed green. He knew that the rune helped with spells, but he wondered how this new one would factor in. His thoughts then reminded him what brought him down to the small alcove. He ran back to the ladder and took the statuette up to the round panels. He placed the new statuette on one of the two unoccupied panels and saw a second set of braziers light up. He then walked over to the final panel and stood on it. He watched as the final set of braziers lit up. He also prepped his tolwar for whatever would happen. He was surprised when the shrine raised up and four scorpion-like creatures walked into the room from the platform under the shrine. He froze, not wanting to gain their attention. He watched as they started to walk not heading in his direction, but they walked with a sickening splat sound. He had prepared for something like this. He pulled out some of his sh chakrams, which were circular throwing blades, and threw one right into the close creature. He watched as all the others turned in the direction of the sound, shrieking and waving their tails. He quickly did the same with the other creatures, and watched as they all disappeared after they fell. When the last one fell, he stepped onto the platform, knowing it was the path he had to take. Soon he felt it descend into the depths of the unknown place he'd been exploring. When the platform finally stopped, Karim saw he was at the far end of a very long hall. He saw a door at the far end, and he knew he had to get there. He started to walk down the hall, but he felt a dark presence in the hall. As he headed down the hall, he noticed some corpses on the floor. They were fresh, telling him that others had made it to this hall, but something about them worried him. On the one had been several cuts around the eyes. As he neared the door, he noticed a tolwar had been rammed into the one's back. Karim had been so good with his blade, he could handle two at once. He pulled out the tolwar and tested it in his hand. As he did so, he heard a strange hiss, and turned to see the corpse the blade was in get up. He also noticed the cuts at this one's eyes. He didn't want to think what beast had turned this man into the mindless thing attacking him. He quickly swung his tolwars and decapitated the dead man. He thought it was over until the body burst apart, revealing a skinny creature with bladed arms and a skull-like head. It was almost unreal, but it happened in front of him. He watched as the creature hissed at him and jumped into the air. 
His instincts took over, getting him out of the way of the creature's jump. He quickly slashed at the creature and removed the foul beast's head. He watched it fall to the floor and then hacked it to pieces. When he, he was done, Karim just said, Could all those tales about monsters be true? If they are, the item I seek must be very powerful. He then entered the door and arrived at a room with one circular end. The first thing he noticed was the two corpses moving towards him. As they approached him, he swore he heard the hiss he heard in the previous hall. He wondered which one of the corpses hid the creature. He quickly attacked them, making sure to stay out of both creatures' reach. Soon, after removing one corpse's limbs, the hissing creature exploded out of that corpse. Karim moved swiftly, rendering the creature headless and destroying the other corpse. When he finished both off, he looked around the room. The first thing he found was a scroll containing a spell of recovery. As he read it, he realized that he already found one of the runes to make it work. He only needed to find the room, rune named Santak. He then noticed the plate on the one door. It had a red rune on it and the image of a Ram Dao. He recognized the rune from the stone slab he found earlier. Now all he had to do was find a Ram Dao, and the rune that would allow him to enchant the sword accordingly. With that in mind, he headed for the only door he could enter. Before he did so, he pulled out the talisman that was in his family for years. His father told him it could heal his wounds and restore his strength. He used the talisman and felt his health return. He then entered the next room. When he closed the door, Karim wasn't surprised to see three corpses heading towards him. He was thankful he didn't hear any hisses. He quickly used the two tulwars to destroy all of the corpses. When they were gone, he took a quick look around the room. He noticed a ladder behind a glowing yellow barrier. He saw a different rune on it and hoped he would find it soon. He also saw a door on his right hand side. He listened at that door for a moment and heard something huge in the room. He looked at his, at his tall wars and said, Maybe I should enchant these. If there is something behind that door, I'll need them enchanted. He quickly looked at the book for the spell and enchanted the tall wars. He hoped the glowing green weapons could handle whatever was on the other side of the door. He was almost shocked at what he saw. At the end of a hall in a large round room was a horrible creature. He also noticed a glowing rune in the creature. It was the same on the barrier. He rushed forward just as glowing lightning started to form around the creature. He quickly sidestepped as the lightning attack struck where he was, but he would not be stopped by the creature. He quickly struck at the heads of the creature, quickly removing two of them. He jumped back as the creature swung at him and barely dodged the creature's attack. He jumped forward and cut off the last head. As the creature fell, he saw the rune glow, and a voice said, Narokath. 
he jumped back as the rune disappeared in a flash of yellow. He almost jumped when he bumped a stone slab. He picked up the slab and read it aloud. Santac, self, so that's what the rune I found me earlier means. He then saw the slab disappear in his hands. He opened the tome and saw the rune now glowed in the book. He also knew he could now get past the barrier. He quickly returned to the previous room and froze. Some of the scorpion-like creatures were now in the room. He carefully walked to the ladder and hoped they wouldn't hear him. He didn't want to fight anything else if he didn't have to. When he reached the ladder, he went to climb it, but froze. He didn't know what he was seeing now, but it wasn't the ladder or the temple. Alexandra Royvis froze from her reading as she heard the voice. All the voice said was, Remember me, Alex. She turned and faced the voice and saw the ghostly image of her grandfather. She looked on in shock as she faced her dead grandfather. He looked healthy, but glowed an eerie blue light. She wanted to hug him since she missed him so much. She was snapped back to reality when the ghost disappeared, and she heard Yvette say, Alexander, are you all right? She noticed, she nodded, and was thankful when Yvette said, It was your grandfather. He knows you'll have to complete the chapter. I think he just wanted to assure you that you're doing the right thing. She nodded and said, I know you're right. I need to finish the chapter. I don't think your husband wants to be stuck in the past. She saw that nod, and she returned to the book. She also wondered why in the chapter Karim had suddenly stopped at the ladder. After blinking his eyes, Karim was in shock at what he saw. He just said aloud, This can't be happening. He froze when he heard all the creatures squeal and turn in his direction. He quickly descended the ladder and entered a hall. When he reached what looked like an intersection, he saw a stone slab on a pile of rubble blocking a door. The slab had a picture of the rune he just found on it with the words, Narrowcath, absorb, on it. He now had the runes so he could cast the recovery spell. He hoped it would work since that disturbing vision he had. He was even hearing voices coming from all around. He cast the spell and saw three green runes appear around him. He then felt his mind clearing, and the voices stopped. He was thankful that he could now use that spell. He started to wonder if he might be able to use it to recover his health. He then entered the only door he saw in the hall. When he entered the door, he saw a huge room at the end of a long hall. He looked around to see four runes on the walls, and in the stone in the center of the room, he saw the Ramdao. He had held a sword like that once. He knew he could handle the huge sword, but he preferred the tall bars. He did know he would need the sword to open the door. However, he also knew that he needed one more rune. The green one didn't match the one on the door. 
he walked over and pulled out the Ram Dao. The second he pulled it out, he heard a gate lower, and he turned to see it block the exit. He then saw six corpses appear in the room. He started to move, hefting the huge sword in his hands, and slaughtered each of the corpses. He was surprised when five more corpses appeared. He moved quick to destroy those as well. He then saw three more corpses appear. These looked more muscular than the last ones. He worked to end their existence as well, thankful that the Ram Dao went through them with ease. When the last of those fell, he saw three more appear, with the same hiss that he had heard earlier. In the middle of the three was the most important, since he saw a glowing red rune in it. He headed straight to it and quickly destroyed it. Quickly he heard the rune's name, Traturga and then he attacked the other corpses. He swung the Ram Dao in such a way that it spun him around, destroying the corpse and then the creature that was in it. When he destroyed the last one, he saw the gate open. When he had a moment to rest, he quickly cast the Recover spell. He then used the Recover spell with the new rune and felt healthier. He waited a moment, and then looked at the Ram Dao. He used the enchant item spell on the Ram Dao with the new rune, and saw it glowing red. He knew now that he had his key to the door. He left the room and raced back to the door with the plate on it. As he ran back to the ladder, up it, and over to the door, avoiding the scorpion-like creatures, and went to the plate. He put the red ram dow into the slot and watched as the plate disappeared. He had unlocked the door. Now he could find out what was behind that door. Karim was not surprised when he entered a curved hall with three more corpses in sight. He quickly rushed them, taking them down with the huge blade. Once the last one fell, he started to run down the curved hall. He was thankful when he saw no more corpses. However, he did stop running when he saw what was in front of him. Something must have collapsed on the place. He looked it over and saw a hole small enough to crawl through. He looked into it and said, After all I've seen in here, climbing through would be too dangerous. There has to be another way. He looked over to the right-hand wall and saw a ladder. He started to climb it hoping he would get past the rubble. When he reached the top of the ladder, he saw more of the scorpion-like creatures. He then saw a ruby statuette in the room. It looked to him like a kneeling warrior. He didn't see any visible extra pass. He did realize that grabbing the statue or killing the creatures might reveal a path. He quickly tossed chakrams into the creatures and ran over to grab the statuette. Neither action revealed a door, but something told him to hold on to the statuette. Karam then sighed and said, I guess I must crawl through that tunnel. He then went down the ladder and climbed through the rubble. When he was finally through, he heard down the tunnel the sound of one of those horrible creatures he saw earlier. 
he wondered how long it would stand to the Ramdal, even when it was glowing red. He looked at the sword and re-enchanted it. He then ran forward and noticed the creature was a different color from the sword. With one good swing, he killed the huge monster and cleared the path to a ladder behind it. He looked back at the rubble and hoped he wasn't making a mistake by following this path. He then descended the ladder. When he was at the bottom of the ladder, he saw a gate to his left and a stone hand-like pedestal similar to the one he found the book. He quickly realized what must be done. He put the tome on the pedestal and heard the gate rise. He grabbed the book and ran for the gate, afraid it would go down. When he was through it, he did hear one sound. He turned, but was thankful when he saw that it was an oddly dressed man. He realized it had to be the man who knew the woman he met earlier. Richard looked straight at Karim as he appeared and said, Karim, I think you know I'm here to help you. He was thankful when Karim nodded. He then said, My name is Richard. The book you found is the same my friends and I found. Something is going on right now that is more dangerous than anything you or I can imagine. The artifact you've been going after may help us stop the evil that comes. The only thing is, you shouldn't touch it. He noticed a puzzled look cross Karim's face as he said, How am I going to claim it without touching it? What would happen if I do touch it? Richard remembered what had happened to Pius after he touched the artifact he had claimed. He looked at Karim and said, if you touch it, the ancient evil that the artifact represents will control you. However, I don't know which one of the artifacts is here. I know Pius took the one he claimed. He then noticed a puzzled look on Karim's face. He looked at him and said, What's wrong? He watched as Karim pointed it and said, It looks like someone beat us here. He watched as Karim ran to the three podiums and followed, hoping it was a mistake. As he ran over, he saw the podiums were empty. He then heard a strange sound and turned to see a red barrier had appeared. He heard Karim say, a trap. Rich took, shook his head and said, No, a trial. Enchant your weapon of choice. I'll be fine with my sword. He watched Karim nod and saw the three runes appear and enchant the sword Karim was holding. Soon he saw corpses start advancing through the barrier. As they advanced, they took each one down. Of course, each one that fell was replaced. After the seventh zombie, he noticed they had changed. The first of the new ones he encountered had a trick he didn't know about. When he cut off the one's head, it slowly regenerated. He started to back up, knowing his sword might not be strong enough. He could tell Karim was having no problems, but after the eighth zombie appeared he heard a hiss, and heard Karim say, Be careful! That corpse is carrying something inside it! Richard nodded 
and charged the new attacker. He quickly lopped off the creature's head, and then saw the zombie explode, revealing the creature he recognized from Anthony's era. He almost froze, but then swung his sword again, decapitating the hissing creature. When it fell, he noticed that most of the zombies were gone. He then froze when he heard the howl of the horror creature. He turned back and backpedaled into the room, round room, and to the wall opposite Karim. He then said, Karim, you attack the left, I'll get the right. Then aim for the middle. Maybe we can bring it down before it hurts us. He saw Karim nod, and they waited until the creature came into sight. They struck fast, and he was glad the creature's heads were all gone before it could attack. When it fell, the barrier fell, and he watched as the barrier fell, and the warped angel artifact appeared. He watched as Karen went to reach for it, but before he could respond, he felt one of the blink attacks. As he blinked his eyes and held his head so he could readjust, he saw a ghost near Karim. He also now saw the claw artifact was there. As he recovered, he heard the ghost say, I did not understand the power the artifact held. I must now ask you to make a sacrifice. He could tell Karim was angry about what she had said, even though he didn't catch all of it. Richard looked at Karim and said, She's right, Karim. If she's asking you to make a sacrifice and guard the artifact, do it. Only the chosen ones will be able to help. Your task is to guard that one until they get here. You'll know them when they come. I'll be here to help them. He watched as Karim nodded and said, The things I do for love. Richard, I know you speak the truth. Do your best to help those who need to get the item where they belong. He nodded, and then heard Karim say, Now go. What I do, I do not only for all, but for the woman I love. He nodded, and ran down the hall to the ladder he saw Karim come down. As he ran, he heard electricity and a scream. He started to climb the ladder when he heard another voice in the hall. He stuck his head up in time to see Pius Augustus walking toward him. When their eyes locked, he heard Pius say, How could you still be around? I may have missed all those centuries ago, but my minions won't. They killed the travelers and a woman foolish to wed me, and now they will kill you. Richard quickly descended the ladder as the creatures advanced, and as he hit the floor, he felt the world change and watched as he returned to the present and the Roivus estate.